There we go. So welcome to day one of boot camp. My name is Monica Perry. I am your market center tech trainer in both the Winston-Salem and Greensboro market centers. And I hope you guys are excited and ready to get going this week. Um, got quite a few of you in here, which is awesome. If at any time you guys have any questions, feel free to either raise your digital hand in Zoom. If you don't know how to do that, you're gonna click down in your Zoom toolbar. You're going to click your reactions button and you should have a reaction that is raising your hand. You can also feel free to type any questions in the chat. And if you don't know how to do either of those things, don't worry, just unmute yourself with the unmute button in the lower left corner of your screen and stop me if you have any questions. So with that being said, does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, so we are here under the presumption that you guys have some familiarity with command. You've logged in, you know how to add a contact, you have a little bit of familiarity with command. Is everybody in the right spot? Yes? Little, little bitty is the clue. Little bitty. <laughs> All right. Good deal. So the first thing I want to start off with talking about is the lead generation model. So if you guys are not or have not read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, I highly recommend that you begin reading that. I keep mine on my desk at all times. Um, I read this book all the way through at least once a year, but I reference it daily. And once you guys have read this, it's going to mean something different to you at every different phase of your career. Um, I have lots of notes, lots of highlights, lots of tabs that take me back to places that I need to reference. So if you have not started reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, please do so. And if you ever have any questions about it, please feel free to ask. So this lead generation model is actually from The Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2, which has not yet been released. Got somebody in the waiting room there. So The Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2 or MREA 2 has not yet been released, but this lead generation model looks a little bit different than the one in MREA1, um, but it is really great because the teal button, the teal text that you see is where this ties into command. So I wanna take a moment to talk about the infinite loop sales cycle here, the infinite loop sales cycle. So before I teach you how to use command, I want you to know why, why should I use command, Monica? So in our business, we operate in a sales capacity, right? But the main part of our business is actually growing contacts and growing those relationships. Nobody teaches you that in real estate school. Your actual job, your main job is lead generation, which is why we go over the lead generation model, okay? So you can see this is broken down into three sections along the left-hand side here, the lead generation portion, the database portion and the sales pipeline portion. Keller Williams Realty International was gracious enough to build us a system that encompasses all the pieces into one program. I know Debo has been in the business for a while. Shannon Anderson has been in the business for a while. Some of your sweet faces and names I don't recognize yet. Um, but as somebody who has been in the business since 2008, I have chased every bright and shiny database program, sales pipelines, transaction management software, all these different things that make real estate businesses run. And I've had so many of them. And the problem with them was they didn't speak to one another. So you had to have spreadsheets. If I was doing this over here in Facebook, then I had to pull that into a spreadsheet so I could put it into top producer and then I had to pull it out of top producer and put it into contactually so that I could send out bulk emails and then I had to pull it over here so that I could do postcards and it was just a mess. <laughs> and so now we're lucky enough to have that all in one program. That lies in the issue that it is a huge program. 
do not expect that you are going to learn every single bell and whistle of command in this week. I don't want you to come into this class with that assumption. This is a big, a big program. I've been working on it since its inception. And so, yes, I do know a lot about the system. And in real estate, we all have to be learning based, right? Learning based people. And that doesn't just go for our command database. That goes for everything in real estate. We get updated forms each year. New laws come into play, um, all kinds of things. So come into this business with a learning based mindset and you will come out a lot better in the end, right? So that being said, let's move forward and look at this sales funnel. So prospecting and marketing is where we're going to start. And in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, you will notice that you see these words quite a bit. Marketing based and prospecting enhanced. And that is because in order to get the number of leads that it would take for you to become a millionaire real estate agent, prospecting is not going to be enough. Marketing is a leveraged activity. And it can help you to widen your reach. And yes, you continue to have to do prospecting. You need to call everybody that you know in your sphere of influence, right? At least once a quarter, pre preferably more. And you need to have systems in place that systematically reach out to these folks because that's going to help you with your time management. At the same time, you're going to have to do marketing of some variety. Today, we are lucky enough to have social media at our fingertips, and you're going to see a lot of that this week. And so this is where we start is with prospecting and marketing. We have campaigns within command that we can use. We have paid ads, bulk emails, direct mail postcards that we can send out, and we can do social media posts. We have our agent website, and we have our mobile app. We have designs, which can do emails, landing pages, social designs on Facebook, print designs, and we can add pages to our agent site here. And what we do when we do all this prospecting and marketing is we drop these folks down into the top of our sales funnel and they become captured leads or captured contacts, okay? Does anybody have any questions up here about the top of the funnel? Are you feeling good? Great. So once we capture these leads and contacts, let's discern between the two. Leads is a one-way offering program, right? We have not had a conversation with this person yet. We maybe got them off of Facebook or they came in off of our agent website. Um, and so then our goal is to take those leads and turn them into contacts and grow the relationship. So if you're looking at page 137 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, if you don't have it, that's okay. It's a large bullseye. And so the goal of that lead generation model, bullseye, target, um, let me see if you guys can see right here, is to get people from the outside circles into the inside circle, right? So the outside circle is the general public. And then the next circle is your target group of not met. The next circle is your met group and the center circle is your allied resources. So conversion rates for those different levels in our met database, our conversion rate for getting a piece of business is 12 to two. And the reason that we say 12 to two instead of six to one is because for every 12 people in our database, if we are contacting them with frequency and intensity should give us two pieces of business one piece of business from their self and one piece of business from somebody that they referred us to, right? If you're looking at your not met database, then you're looking at a 50 to one conversion ratio. So the more folks that we can get out of that not met category and push them into our Mets category, you can see that you're gonna get a much bigger impact for the amount of work that you're doing. So we're capturing all of these folks and we're dropping them into our command database. Contacts is what the first thing we're going to go over today in command. And the more data that you can put with that contact in command, the better off you're going to be. The command database is something where if you put junk in, you will get junk out. 
So the better the information that you put in, the better results that you're going to get at the end. So now that we have connected with these leads and contacts, one way that we can systematically have conversations with them is through the use of smart plans, which is the second thing that we are going to go over today. And then once we communicate with them enough, um, think about communication with your database as making deposits in a bank. Um, the great Jason Abrams used this analogy and I really loved it. So with your leads and contacts, you're constantly making deposits of conversations, offering them value, and eventually we get to make a, a withdrawal, right, in the form of a transaction that's going to put some money in our pocket. So once we have that going and then somebody raises their hand and says they are ready to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, we are going to drop them into our opportunities, which is what we are going to look at tomorrow. Opportunities is another word for our transactions. And the first stage of our opportunities is cultivating. So if someone says, yes, I do want to buy a house. However, my credit's bad. Great. What value can I offer that person? Maybe I can put them with a lender that handles credit repair. So then I'm cultivating that piece of business. I'm continuing to offer them value using touch programs and making sure that I stay in front of that person for when they are ready to pull the trigger and buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Next, we would move them into opportunities, active and under contract, and then to closed. Now, traditionally, this is where our sales funnel ended. We got the piece of business, we closed the piece of business over, right? The infinite sales model is a little bit different. You're going to see that when they make it to close here, we're taking this arrow and taking them back up and dropping them back up at the top of the funnel and doing the same thing all over again. Um, another sales cycle that you will see looks kind of like a roller coaster, right? The ups and downs. So at the top of the peak, we have about 100% chance that we're going to get money from this person because they're buying a house from us today. And then starting tomorrow, that goes down to almost zero because they just bought a house, right? And then that climb back up to the next purchase is where we have to stay in touch with our people. I was terrible at staying in touch with my people after closing. I'm just being honest, right? And this program helps us to not fall into that real estate hole that a lot of us fall into. And that's not keeping in touch with our people after they close. I think the statistic is somewhere around 92% of people say that they would use their real estate agent again, and about half of that number actually use their real estate agent again. And that's not the, the consumer's fault, that's our fault for not staying in touch with them and continuing to offer them value after closing. So let's go through an example of the infinite loop and why using this program to keep you in touch with your folks is so important. So some of you have just joined Keller Williams and welcome. Um, so let's say that you came from another job, right? You've let all your sphere of influence know that you are now in real estate and one of your previous coworkers um, reaches back out and says, oh, that's so exciting. And you start a conversation with them. You continue to add value to them and with frequency and intensity and communication through the use of smart plans, such as the monthly neighborhood nurture, the birthday smart plan, that quarterly call plan. Remember I said you need to call everybody in your sphere of influence at least once a quarter, right? So maybe after all of that communication, they end up getting a promotion and they call you to help them purchase their first home. You give them the best experience, the Disney World experience during this transaction, right? We're communicating, we're building a, a stronger relationship with them and then they get to closing, right? So we bring them back up and we add them to, the, we add their new neighborhood to their monthly neighborhood nurture. We now get to reach out every year and tell them happy home anniversary, invite them to any client appreciation events that we're doing. Maybe you're an agent that decides you like doing the Thanksgiving pie giveaway. That's another thing that you can do for them. Um, a monthly or quarterly newsletter would be an, another example of something that you could send that would be valuable. And you continue on with that birthday and quarterly call plan. So through that frequency and intensity of communication, they then send you a referral of their friend, right? 
So now you have the opportunity to send them a thank you card. And maybe if it was, you know, a really nice house, you pop by and give them a gift. And then three years later, we're continuing all those conversations during this time. You remind them when I helped you buy your home, the contractor, the um, I'm sorry, the inspector said your roof had five years of life on it. It's been three years. Would you like for me to connect you with some vendors that can come out and give you a quote on that roof? Talk about value. That person is going to feel so important to you that you remembered that they needed to get that contractor out there to look at their roof, right? So then they have a baby and they call you because they need to move up and get a bigger home. Then they get another promotion and they call you because they're ready to buy that beach house at Carolina Beach that they've always dreamed of. So you can see just from that one contact how many pieces of business that you can get as long as you are staying in close um, emotional proximity to that person. And then the cycle continues on and on. Now multiply that by the number of people that you know, right? How much business could that lead to? A whole lot, especially if in conjunction with your prospecting, you're also doing marketing, right? So this is kind of the why behind the system, the why behind all the steps that we take to stay in touch with our folks. Does anybody have any questions about this before we actually dive into command? Does this surprise anybody seeing this? Did it, did it make anything quick for you? Any ahas that you took away from looking at this example? I'm going to take two ahas and then we'll move forward into command. If somebody's got to unmute. Biggest one is for me is keeping up with your keeping up with your clients after you sell them a house. Great, great, Kay. And what were you going to say, Shannon? Um, just when you were saying some of the examples of reasons to reach back out. Recently, this uh, has been one that I've been using is contacting people and, and asking them if they refinanced recently because the rates are so low. Absolutely. And we have a great product for doing that in Keller Mortgage. Um, I'll take myself a little off topic. I just refinanced with Keller Mortgage back in, I want to say April, and they saved us $800 a month. And now the same Keller Mortgage Lender just reached back out to us and said, I know you, you just did your refi. However, I can now get you down to 2.75%. So now we just did it again and really got our interest rate down to historic lows. So that is definitely a piece of value that you could be offering. That's a great example, Shannon. Absolutely. And thank you, Kay, for your aha. It is very important for us to stay in touch with our people after we close. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop into command and we're going to navigate to agent.kw.com. If you have not bookmarked this yet, please do. It'll make your life easier. Again, that is agent dot kw dot com good all right so that is going to bring us to our command login screen and i don't want to be greta today i would like to be monica i was helping greta if you guys ever need me to log into your system to do something for you please feel free to ask because that is something that i do if you guys need me okay Internet's just wanting to be a little wonky. Technology happens. And that is one thing I can tell you guys. Technology is technology. And while I love it, it can um, give us trouble sometimes. And that's just part of life. <laughs> so try your best not to get super, um, super frustrated with it. Take a break. Go refill your iced coffee and come back and usually it has worked itself out. So now that we are here, we are going to log in with our KW credentials into the command platform. Everybody's got their command credentials and they're comfortable logging in, yes? Good, okay. 
So once we log in, it's going to take us to our home screen. And I'll take a few minutes here to kind of show you guys around. Um, on your home screen, you have your tasks, recent leads, designs updates, your database health score, your goals, the product updates that are coming from KWRI to tell us what's happening with command, and you have a notepad, right? So if you don't need your notepad, for example, you can customize this home screen by clicking the customize home button in the upper right hand corner and you can drag these around. Maybe you like your notepad and you want it to be up at the tip top here so that you can always access it, then you can. Or you could just say, I don't need to see the notepad at all and click apply and that notepad is now gone. So you can customize this home screen to your liking. I always keep my NRDS number at the top of my notepad so that I don't forget it because I can't remember that number for some reason. Had it for a really long time. So anyhow, that is your home screen. You get these design updates, new designs that came out, and we will move forward from here unless anybody has any questions about the home screen. Feeling good? Fantastic. So the first thing that we're going to do today is move into contacts, and we're going to look at adding a contact. Okay. So all of you hopefully know how to add a contact, right? What I really wanna go over with you is the bells and whistles of adding contacts and why tagging is so important and all of the different things that you can do. Once you have this contact added, you can put them on saved searches. You can set them up on smart plans. Um, you have a lot of things that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and move into the add a contact button in the upper right corner. And we're going to start typing in somebody's information. So name, keep in mind, command only does two names. So if you do give somebody a middle initial like this, when it pulls their information into dot loop and or DocuSign, it's still only going to say client first name, client last name. So if they sign with that middle initial, you will need to add it in your e-signature platform of choice. So then we can add their primary email and their primary phone number. This is really important. Lots of people have multiple emails and multiple phone numbers. Maybe during the daytime, they need to add, be called at this number. And in the evening, you can call them on their cell phone. So make sure that you're putting the one that you're going to be using the most in these primary fields here. Okay. You have the opportunity to add some additional emails and phone numbers further down in the contact card. So for our lead source type, it is so important for you guys to know your return on investment or your ROI from all the activities that you're doing, no matter if they are paid activities, even if they're free activities, they still cost something. And what, are the, what is it that they cost? Time, right? If it is a waste of your time, don't do it. So in order to know where are we getting our value, we need to discern where we've met this person. So there are already pre-installed lead sources and we have the ability to add custom lead sources. So agent, did you get them from another agent or an allied resource? That's that center portion of your um, circle in the millionaire real estate agent. Those cheerleaders for our business. Um, you can see I added baseball. My son Tyson has played baseball since he was four. That is a huge part of our life. I know a huge number of people through baseball. So that was important enough for me personally to add as a lead source, right? I also used to belong to Business Networking International when I was still in sales. So that would be another example of a custom lead source that you may want to add. Now you can go through and think about all of the places that you meet people and make one of those a lead source for yourself. We also have the pre-installed, you know, Boomtowns and Brevities. I added Chamber Events, which I've done a lot. Circle Prospecting. You have a lot of different ones in here. And if the one that you want to add does not exist, then you can add it for yourself. Okay. Another lead source is a contact. If my big brother, and yes, I still call him my big brother, even though we're both in our 40s because he is my big brother. Um, he lives in Huntersville, but we did grow up here. 
So if he calls me and says, hey, you know, my friend that I went to high school with still lives in Clemens and he needs to buy a house. Can you help him? And I connect with that person and sell them a house. The lead source was my brother. I didn't meet him out somewhere else. My brother called me and told me to call him. And that's how I sold that house. So then the lead source would be my brother. And I could add it from my contacts that my brother was the lead source. Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. Marking as a lead and adding to sales pipeline. If you're marking them as a lead, that would be somebody who has either come in off of Facebook or some other form of lead generation and are raising their hand to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. If you know that they're taking action and that they are going to, in fact, buy, sell, or invest, you can go ahead and add them to your sales pipeline right here from the contact card. Okay? So that's what these two buttons are for. If you mark them as a lead, they are going to end up with this little teal L that you see next to this gentleman over here on the left. It's going to get that little teal L right there. This is probably my favorite part of a contact and one of the most important, and that is tags. Um, if you look in your cell phone and go to your contacts on your phone, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it will show you how many contacts that you have in your phone. My number is 6,553 6, people, right? Um, if I put all of those people in command and I had no way to cull through them or sort them, that would be a hot mess. So that is where tags come into play. Um, as of right now, you guys as the agents are actually my, my customers, right? And so I have you guys tagged out as either being part of KW1 in Greensboro or being part of KW Elite in Winston-Salem. And that way I can sort through and see you guys. I also have tags for basketball because my daughter is a basketball player. I know another big group of people from that. So I have tags for baseball, basketball, all kinds of different things for the people that I know. So you have some pre-installed tags. Um, agent is one. They're that gray color. Um, there's another one, an allied resource. You have buyer, seller, past client. Um, several that were pre-installed. However, you also have the ability to make custom tags. And in order to do that, um, I'm trying to think of something I haven't added before. My niece plays volleyball, we'll lead with that. So maybe I have a, a kid that plays volleyball and I know a lot of people from that, but I've never added volleyball as a tag before. If I begin to type it, then I get the ability here to create a custom tag. So you want to make sure that you type that word, whatever it's going to be, all the way out, and then you're going to click the Create Custom Tag button, right? You can choose a color for that tag. So maybe I wanna use purple for volleyball. I can add that tag, and now that tag exists in my database for use on any future contacts that I add. I'll have the ability to sort and filter by this tag, set up smart views in my contacts with this tag. So I cannot express to you the importance of doing your tags. Maybe he's gonna be a buyer. Um, you know, whatever system of tags that you wanna use is totally fine. If you are a person that likes the DTD2 tagging system, and if you've never heard of that, if you go to my website, kwtriadtech.com, if you're interested in DTD2 tagging, I'll let that open up. If you come over here to the left, this welcome new agents, this downloads a PDF for you. Um, this is a generalized one. I do have a specific one for the Winston-Salem Market Center, which is my home base market center, but I did expand this out to Greensboro. And if you scroll on through here, there's lots of information in here that is useful. If I scroll on through here, then it takes you to the DTD2 tagging schedule. And the purpose of this is to prevent call bias because it's a whole lot easier for me to call my friends and family than it is for me to call my son's entire baseball team and all of the parents, right? I'm always gonna opt for those easier calls first 
And this is to stop you from doing that. So there's 52 weeks in the year, and they have broken this down to 52 different segments. Well, half of that actually. Um, but on week one, so January 1st, you call A and W last names that start with A and W, and you text all last names that start with N, right? Week two, B and E, D and O, and it moves on through, and then you repeat, but you change out the um, text because you're texting and it goes on through. So the whole point of this is to prevent call bias. So a lot of people um, do like to use this as tags. So in this instance, that would be P and L in my DTD2 tagging system. And I can do that and tag this person that way. So does anybody have any questions on tags? Oh, one more thing. If you are on a team, your rainmaker or whoever is in charge, your director of operations of your team are the only people that can set up team tags, right? If the contact exists on your personal side of command, you can tag it with all of your tags. However, if it exists on the team side, you can only tag it with the team's um, previously set up tagging system. If there's one maybe that you need to add, ask your administrator of your team to add that tag for you, or if you can add that tag. Okay. No questions. I'm going to move forward. Okay. Monica, is there any talk of adding more colors? I, I haven't seen that on the roadmap, Shannon. Um, Shannon does know, um, and I didn't mention this to you guys earlier, I am a labs advisor for Keller Williams, so I do get early releases of things and I get to see roadmaps of what's coming so that I can test out products and give my feedback and no, I have not seen that on the roadmap, but I have in fact heard it requested numerous times and that led me to a great segue Shannon, thank you. If you guys are using this system and you're like, gosh, Monica, I really wish that this system did X, right? You can actually go to ideas.kw.com. Again, that's ideas.kw.com. And you can submit an idea for a feature that you would like to see added. Since this is a platform that we own, we do have the ability to add to it. And you will see that we do get lots of um, feature releases. You will see me announce those both in Facebook and they'll usually come out in the email form and on YouTube. And so if you go to ideas.kw.com, the first thing that you wanna do is search for your idea first because somebody else might've already had it. Color tags. Can we have like 10 or 20 more colors to play with custom tags? <laughs> you can see that I have already voted for that. And you have the opportunity to go there and look up your idea. If it exists, go ahead and vote for it. And another cool thing, if you really, really want it to happen, you can actually open up this idea and you can copy the link and take it and go to Facebook or to your friends in the office or whatever and say, hey, can you go here and vote for this idea? The development team, really, I promise you, they really do go here. And the more people that have asked for something to go into effect, the sooner that they will try to make that happen for us. And you can even see in here um, what status things are in. So if you're just a curious person like I am, you can actually go through ideas.kw.com and look at all of the stuff that's being voted for. And some of it will say it's in production or it's already completed. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can look at in here, which is really cool. All right, fantastic. Okay, so hopefully we will get more tag colors because I would like that myself. Um, but we're going to click this add more information button here. That is going to expand some additional fields for us. Okay, so when I, open that up, then I can open this additional contact information button. Okay, I'm gonna slide down. Preferred method of contact, right? This is important. Shannon, how do I like to be contacted? Because I know Shannon knows. I text. <laughs> text, 
say that all the time. Because I'm in Zoom all day, right? So I can't answer the phone. I would love to answer your call. And if I'm in here teaching, I can't answer the phone. So I always prefer that you guys text me. My phone is sitting right here off to my left. I can see if texts come in. And then when class is over, I can look down and say, oh, Shannon needs help with, you know, whatever, a campaign or something. And then I can reach back out to Shannon. So just like Shannon knows that I like to be texted, you guys really need to know how your people want to be contacted. If they have a super high stress job and you call them in the middle of the day, it's not going to go over very well with them. So that should be something that you ask your people. How do you prefer that I contact you? Email, phone, or text, right? And denote that in their contact. Here's that spot where you can add additional email addresses, right? Maybe they have a work email address that they have to check eight to five. And then when they get off work, they no longer have access to that email. So then you need to email them on their personal email address. That is something you might need to know. Very important when signing documents or something like that, right? You also have additional phone numbers, same thing. My best friend works at a bank. I can't call her on her cell phone during the day. I would have to call her on her office phone if I needed to talk to her, right? So you have the option to add multiple emails and phone numbers here. Primary address. Y'all, we sell residential real estate. If we don't know where someone lives, that's a problem, right? How can we offer value and hyper-local information if we don't know where someone lives? So I challenge you today, if you've got 10 contacts in command, 20 or 1,300, right? Try to get those home addresses. Preferably, you're going to do that through conversation. Um, if you're not quite comfortable enough there yet, we have these things called tax records. And you can look people up and find out what their home address is. We cannot put them on monthly neighborhood nurtures or send them postcards or birthday cards or holiday cards or any of those things if we don't have their home address. So I challenge you guys, if you take one thing away from today, get your contacts full. Do it now while you don't have that many. I've helped people with databases of 5,000, 10,000 folks. If you don't have home addresses and you have to call through that many people, it is a terrible feeling of how am I going to accomplish this? So start off on the right track and make sure that you're adding in home addresses. All right, social profiles, okay? So how do I get somebody's social profile link? I'm gonna go into Facebook. If you guys haven't friended me on Facebook yet, please do so but I'm gonna go into Facebook, okay? So no matter whose profile you go to, I'm just gonna to go to my own. You're going to see that when I'm in here, I have this up here, facebook.com forward slash whatever their username is. This is what you want to copy, right? And then put it into the contact under their social profile. And same thing, you can add multiple. You've got Twitter, Insta, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google Plus, and Snapchat. Um, <laughs> they've even got MySpace on there. They're taking it way back. Hopefully, they're going to add TikTok soon because we all know that's where everybody's hanging out now. Okay. So adding these social profiles will give you the ability when you're doing a Facebook ad, you can target your database. Can't do that without that Facebook profile link in the contact card, right? Also, as our artificial intelligence grows, which is how this is powered, it's going to give us some future insights on folks in our database as well. So that's a good habit to get in also. Does anybody have any questions about the additional contact information in our contact card? Everybody feeling good? So let's expand the about section. This is where we get to add a legal name. Um, if you know somebody who goes by Ty, but their actual name is Tyson, you wanna make sure that you put their legal name in here because they need to sign their documents with their legal name, not whatever they go by, right? Um, you can add a description down here, birthday, home anniversary, and relationships. I'm gonna pop back up to the top. There's also the ability to add a relationship here. 
in command, if you've used other databases before, everybody has to be a separate contact. So if Dakota's um, sister is Sasha, and I didn't already have Sasha in my system, then I would have the ability to go ahead and add her, or just add a contact with just the name, and then I could go back later and fill in that data. But this way it connects them as having a relationship. And further down here is where you have the ability to add more relationships, right? So maybe Dakota and his sister, Sasha, invest in property together, then you do want to have them connected because it will make it easier for you moving on down the line. And you can also add other connections. And that's got another really valuable piece for you is if you know that Dakota's mother, um, maybe she started their investment business and she's fallen ill. You want to make sure that you're like, hey, Dakota, how is your mom doing, by the way? You know, unfortunately, I heard on Facebook that she's not feeling very well. I just wanted to check in on her, right? So that gives you an option of a point of discussion, or maybe um, their kid just got into Yale or something like that, right? So you do have the ability to add more relationships down here. Company name, also important. Anybody that's already um, entered a company name in here, it exists in the system. So a lot of times if you search it, like Baptist Hospital, then it will already exist, right? Down here as a selection. If it's never been added, then you can actually add it in and you can add in their job title, right? So that's a good thing to have here as well. And then my second favorite feature, other than tags in our contacts, is the ability to add custom fields. Consider anything that you add into a person's contact as another building block in your relationship. And the more that we know about them, the more we have to talk about, the more value that we can bring to them, the more conversations that we get to have, and the more it benefits our business and benefits them. We want everything in true KW culture to be a win-win. So any conversations that we're having with our folks, you want to bring them value, right? And custom fields is a way that you can do that. Embarrassingly enough, due to our beating yesterday, I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. So that is something I like to talk about. I love football. I like talking about football and all kinds of sports for that matter. So I use custom fields a lot of time to add that somebody's a Carolina fan when I'm a Duke fan so that I can pick on them when we beat them. Um, for example, right, we can also add, you know, if you're a pie giveaway kind of person, maybe you want to add their favorite flavor of pie as a custom field so that when Thanksgiving comes around, you can actually sort and know how many apple pies and how many pumpkin pies do I need to go get from Costco, right? Um, children that don't have buying power. So like my son and daughter are 16 and 13, they can't buy a house right now. Um, I would add those as custom fields. So that way I can ask somebody, how's your kid doing going back to school this week or last week? I hope they were really excited. Right. So you can add all kinds of stuff. There's basketball teams, hockey teams, favorite pies, pet names. Right. People love pets. In fact, Dakota and Sasha that are being used in this example are my dogs that are asleep right down there. And they are my babies second to my children. So that is another thing that you can add as a custom field. The, the ideas are limitless. Right. Limitless. Um, give me two more ideas of something we can add as a custom field and then we're going to move forward somebody a hobby hobbies perfect what else come on guys i know y'all know something any kind of special interest or anything yep special interest definitely maybe they're in um you know into flowers right gardening clubs all kinds of fun stuff Okay, so Dakota already exists in my database, so I'm going to hit cancel instead of create, but at this point, if you were finished, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you want to say, you know, what college did he go to? He went to UNCG. That's another one that I like to use for people that are, so maybe he went to UNCG. Then I could 
create this contact, right? All right. Any questions before I close this out on adding your contact and why it's so important to make your contact have as much info as possible? Everybody good? Okay. So we're going to pretend like I did add Dakota and I put his home address in there, which is my home address, 600 Quarter Staff Road in Winston-Salem. Guess what command knew when I added that in? It knew that Dakota lived in well, I lied because I put Dakota as living with my brother. So it knows that Dakota lives in Skybrook and Huntersville because I added that home address to Dakota, right? Waycross Drive in Huntersville, it knows that Dakota lives in Skybrook, right? So who cares, Monica? What's the point? Well, if you come down to the map and hit this preview, it's going to show you a preview of the monthly neighborhood nurture that you could send out to Dakota. Okay, so when I first added Dakota, Skybrook was the only neighborhood that I had. That's the one he lives in. That was all I had. However, through our time knowing each other, I know that Dakota also wants to buy a house at the beach. So I've added some Carolina Beach neighborhoods to Dakota and that way he gets updated on those each month when he gets his monthly neighborhood nurture. And then I saw that Dakota went in and started adding some stuff in San Antonio. And I was like, huh, I wonder why he's doing that. So guess what that gave me? An opportunity to reach out and be like, hey, man, I saw that you started looking at some houses in San Antonio. What's up with that? And then I found out that Dakota has a huge family in San Antonio, Texas. And he's thinking about investing in a property out there so that when he goes out to visit, um, he can have a place to stay, right? So that's another key point. So again, if it's a listing or somebody that already owns a house, you definitely want to add their current home address into their contact card. But say they're a renter. Yes, you need to add their home address in because you want to be able to mail them stuff, right? But if you know that they in no way care about living in the area where they currently are and when they want to buy they want to live somewhere different so maybe for instance right now they're renting out in Louisville but you know that they want to move into Ardmore then you might want to add Ardmore as a neighborhood for them. You can remove these neighborhoods if they are no longer um, needed to look at right. I can add neighborhoods I can do it in two different ways. I can click add and I can search for Buena Vista. And yes, Buena Vista, not Buena Vista. If you live in Winston-Salem, it is Buena Vista, even if it hurts your ears. But I can search for Buena Vista and I can add it to him by name, okay? I can also click find on map, okay? So it knows that he lives in that area. Let me pull up a different contact card that actually has a local address. I forgot that I changed Dakota's as a, a shade where he bought something one day. Let me pull up my own contact card. Now, this knows that I live in Old Sherwood Forest, right? So if I needed to add a neighborhood, I can add by searching or I can click find on map, okay? So it's pinpointed where I currently live. You can begin to zoom in on the map and keep in mind these neighborhoods are populated by a program that we partner with called Nextdoor. If you're not familiar with Nextdoor, go check them out at nextdoor.com. It's like the Facebook of a neighborhood it shows, you know, who's giving out Halloween candy. You type in your address and you can search for it. So if the neighborhood does not exist in next door, it does not exist in command. And I know that Debo and I have had this conversation as well as Amanda Shore and I, because they're a little bit further out in Wilkes and Yadkinville, might not be as many neighborhoods out there, right? So that can um, pose an issue. But if that is the case, then I highly recommend using the map to find neighborhoods around someone's address, right? If they're interested in that general area, 
then you can just go through and pick a few neighborhoods that are around them. And then as they're searching, they get to look at as many as they want to anyway, right? So when they get that email, they can look at them themselves. I'm going to pull up an example of that monthly neighborhood nurture so that you can see what it looks like. Bear with me one second while I pull up an email so that you can see it. And I'll pull it back over onto the screen to not show any sensitive information just in case. Just give me one sec. Um, monthly neighborhood. Here's one example. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back over. There we go. So if you set somebody up on a monthly neighborhood nurture, which I'm gonna show you how to do in the second half of this class, this is what it looks like, right? They get this email once a month, or you can put them on the bi-weekly, which will send it once every two weeks. And you can click through, this is what it, exactly what it looks like. Jasmine was in one of these classes and she added me to the monthly neighborhood nurture. I can see what's happening in my neighborhood. I can click explore neighborhood. It's branded to you down here at the bottom. Got all your nice stuff and your pretty face, right? So it looks really great. And then when I go through as a consumer, I couldn't show you this from the agent's perspective, but this is actually me looking at this as a consumer. This is the email that I got, like I potentially maybe want to sell my house. You can see what this looks like. I can look through and see what's happening with all the houses and go, holy moly, that's right down the street and it's on the market for 445. Guess what that might do? Guess how much I bought this house for? 290. And guess what? My house has five bedrooms, right? So that might make me go, huh, <laughs> maybe I might feel like selling my house right now if I'm going to be able to get that much more money for it, right? If this email wasn't going out, you wouldn't have that opportunity. I also have the opportunity as a consumer to add additional neighborhoods, either by name or the map. And I can follow that and add as many neighborhoods as I would like to see. And I can click through. And then in the contact card, you can see that all of this stuff is happening, which is super cool. They can love houses. They can hide houses. Again, you will see that in the contacts. Um, card that it's doing that, right? So super cool. So you can see what that looks like. So that is the importance of adding some neighborhoods to your person and making sure that they are showing up over here on this side. So then you can see all of the other info that you've added, birthdays, all that kind of fun stuff. You cannot put somebody on the birthday smart plan if you don't have their birthday added to their contact card, right? Does anybody have any questions on adding neighborhoods? Because that's a biggie. Good, awesome. Okay, so let's move over into our activity timeline here, okay? Um, this was me doing this, subscribing them to different neighborhoods. Um, if you have your Gmail connected in your settings, and you're emailing them from your Gmail, it's actually tracking those emails, right? And so then I could actually click view email and it would take me to my inbox and show me where that email was and what it said, okay? If it is an email that you sent through command, for example, a monthly neighborhood nurture, right? then it's going to show up, but you can't actually open the email and see it. It was sent through command mail. So I just wanted to make sure to discern that for you. If it was sent through your Gmail, you can actually open and open it up and see it. If it was sent through command mail, it just shows it to you in the contacts timeline, but it does not allow you to open it and see it. Okay. All right. So timeline is super cool. If this person, I do want to switch back to Dakota now because I want you guys to see something. If this person has a connection to your website, they've actually got a account set up on your website. And I'll show you guys that on Wednesday. 
um, you'll see this little green check mark here, okay? And then if they go to your website and they're looking at stuff, let me make sure I'm logged in as Dakota. Give me one sec. Yes, I am. So if he starts looking around at houses, just gonna look around his current location to make it easier. Then you're going to see I apologize for my internet. It's just decided to go slow this morning, apparently. There we go. So say he clicked through on this house and he was like, ooh, Cliffmore, I might be interested in that house. I want to look at it. I want to look around, look at all the pictures of this house, right? And then he's like, I like this house. And he hits this little heart. And he can add, maybe that's his stretch goal. Maybe he really was looking up the 600,000 and this one's 618. So he's putting it in his stretch goal house because if he liked it enough, maybe he would go for it, right? Back in Dakota's contact card, you can actually see him having those activities will start to populate in his timeline, right? So you can go through, I'm just gonna go back through. You can see where I've added calls. Um, I added a save search for him all the different things that have been done, texts that have been sent, smart plans that I've put them on, um, bulk emails like happy summer that I sent out, right? All these different things that have been done with this particular contact. He favored a listing in Carolina Beach, all that kind of stuff. So that's super cool that you can keep track of all of that. And vice versa, I'm gonna show you in the contact list how that can be useful. You can also create opportunities straight from the contact card. So if Dakota did see that his neighbor's house sold for, you know, 150,000 more than what he bought it for five years ago, and he was like, I want to sell my house, then you could actually come into his contact card and click create opportunity and go ahead and get his transaction going. You can view the smart plans that you have him on, or you can add him to a smart plan like the monthly neighborhood nurture. For example, from right here, I can choose to start it now and confirm and confirm and it will add him to that smart plan and now it shows up here. I can see any tasks that I have related to him. Mine might look a little bit different than you, so you're getting a sneak peek at what the new tasks are going to look like when they release. Um, super cool release. It's coming very, very soon, possibly this week. Um, you can take notes, right? Taking notes when you're having conversations with somebody is imperative. And once Command Mobile releases, which should be soon in 2021, that's, that's the goal. It's a lot easier to take notes if you're just sitting there on your phone. Um, but hopefully when you're doing your lead generation anyway, you've built yourself a bunker and you're in front of your computer and you can take these notes. So you can just click add a note and put all your notes in here. And that way you can look back and see what you discuss on different phone calls and things of that nature. And now saved searches, okay? So you can create your contact a saved search. We're gonna click the create save search button. I will tell you each save search can only be for one neighborhood or one zip code, right? If you wanna set up several, so I'm pretty particular, um, I'll live in 27104 or 27106 and that's about it, right? I know that myself. So you would have to set up two separate safe searches for me, right? Um, but you could set up, say, we'll go with Buena Vista because it's close to me. There it is, Buena Vista Winston-Salem search, right? So you wanna have that one and then say max price of, I don't know, it's an expensive neighborhood. 750,000 keywords. Monica's got to have a pool. Y'all will come to know that. All property types, all listing statuses. I got to have five bedrooms. Makes it kind of tough. And I need to have at least two bathrooms. I don't care about your built or any of that stuff. And then I can set up that save search. And when I click next, 
I'm going to give it a title. So I'm just going to say BV52 with pool or something that will make Dakota know, right? Now I can choose by toggling on how often do I want him to get these email notifications? Every time that the listing hits the market instantly, a daily summary, a weekly summary, a bi-weekly or a monthly, right? So I can set up instant and create save search. Now, if anything hits the market fitting that criteria, Dakota is going to get an email that tells him, right? So that's super cool that they can set that up. Also, Dakota can log in and he can search, right? So say he just wants, he knows he wants to live kind of in this little area here. He can now, this is a recent release, he can draw on the map, okay? So I can click draw and I can just go whoop. He wants to live right in here, right? So this is your client doing it. They can draw on the map. They can use filters. They can search. They can do all the things. And then they can click save search and say, you know, draw an area in 27104. And I, he can decide, does he never want to get them instantly, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly? updates. So say he wants to know instantly and click save. And so now in his contact, we hit refresh. You will see his number of saved searches will increase by one after this finishes loading from going slow. We'll just give her time. It's Monday. Everybody feels this way, I think. Let me close some of this stuff. There we go. So save searches will show up here, created by Monica or created by the consumer. So hopefully that will show up there. Monica, do we have the ability to draw like that as well or just the consumer? We don't yet. But the next thing that I'm going to show you guys, well, I was going to show you Wednesday, but I'll show it to you now. If you want your client to have a login to your website, if they don't have an account, you can't see their activity, right? I will tell you that. So if you want to make sure that you can see their activity, my best practice is to go to your own website, right? Let me log out as him. Let me close some of this stuff out. But apparently, I've got too much open. So go ahead and just create them an account. If you have their email, go ahead and click sign up, put their, their last name and first name, their email address, and set up something like, you know, password. one and say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, here is your login to my website. Once you get in there, please change your password to whatever you want it to be. And that way you know that their account is set up correctly, both in their app, same thing, same login for the app and the website, right? That way you know they're connected. Saves them a step and you know it's done. If that was the case, when you first logged in for them, if you knew that they were interested in a certain area, you could go in and draw on the map for them, Shannon. But no, from the agent side, not yet, but that is coming. That is on the roadmap, okay? Anybody have any questions there? Will you just go over that again? So if they're, if we're in command and we've got them as a contact, in order to make sure that they can access all of that we need to go separately to our website yeah i mean if if you want to just send them to your website and say just make sure that you create a login and you feel confident in their ability to do that sure they can do it right if you don't want them to have to do it then you can go to your own website and create them an account 
and then just email them and say, hey, I've set up your account on my website. Here's the login information. Please feel free to go in and change your password. All right, I set you up with the generic password. Please feel free to go in and change it. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so now we've added a contact. We went all the way through everything that's in a contact, right? I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things in the contact list view that you can do. We can import contacts. So if you had another database or you have some other place, a spreadsheet or something where you were keeping all of your contacts, let's go ahead and click this import button in the upper right hand corner. The main thing you have to remember is that you must use the pre-made CSV file from command. They have to be in that order. So if you're a person that feels comfortable working with spreadsheets more so than you do adding people individually, you need to download this pre-made CSV file. It's just an Excel file that is a comma separated value file. I'm going to let that open up and I'll pull it over so that you can see it. No matter where you had your contacts before, as long as you copy and paste them into this spreadsheet, you will be able to upload them. Do not delete any columns. Even if you're like, I'm not going to use any of these last 20 columns, then just leave them alone. If you don't want to look at them, you can shrink them down or something. But do not delete them. Because if, you, if it is not in this format, it will not upload. Okay? It will not upload. So if you are coming out of another CRM, I recommend doing stuff. Hopefully you already have that other CRM tagged or segmented in some way. I recommend going through and doing them in groups because it's better to do like 50 or 100 at a time instead of trying to do like 5,000 at one time. Because then if you get some kind of an error message, you have to call through 5,000 people. Nobody wants to do that. So break it down by tags. You can add their custom tags here, save that spreadsheet, and then you drop that file right there and it will upload them into the command system. So that is how you can pull them in from a CSV file. I do not currently recommend that you sync them. There is the ability to do that. And right now that is done through PySync. PySync is dissolving and going out of business. And after December of 2021, they will no longer exist. You will start getting emails letting you know that if you are currently using PySync, here is the replace, um, the recommended replacement, which is going to be called API Nation. Um, once it gets released, I will teach on it. Um, it is available. It's still got some glitches. So I'm not ready for you guys. I'm not ready to go all in on it with you. I do have it set up for myself and I'm doing some testing with it. Um, but once I do feel confident in that, I will release training on that. And that will be how you sync your database with something else like Google Contacts or uh, I don't know what Apple Contacts are called, but iPhone Contacts um, or any other kind of database that you use that will be using API Nation for a sync. Okay. Um, I'm a big proponent when you're newer of adding contacts individually so that you can make sure that they're full contacts. Because if you look at some of the contacts in my phone, it'll say call off open house sign. That's the name. That doesn't give me a whole lot of information. I don't even have the person's name. I just have their cell phone number. That doesn't help me, right? So I would rather call that number and be like, hey, so I have your phone number in my phone. I'm so sorry. I must have met you at the open house last week at 123 Maple Street. And then have a conversation with them and then add a contact that's got some, some meat, right? Um, but totally up to you how you do that. If you like working in spreadsheets, go ahead and put 20 contacts in there and fill them out and then upload them into command. Does anybody have any questions on importing? And we are going to get an import wizard that's going to make it a lot easier to import in the future, which is going to be cool. These three dots up here give you the opportunity to export all the contacts that you own. So if you're on a team, you can't export the team's contact, but you can export all the contacts that you own, okay? You can export them as mailing labels, 
in a CSV file, which is like what we just looked at, or you can export mailing labels as a PDF for all of your own contacts with these three dots in the upper right corner. Does anybody have any questions there? Good? Awesome. Filters, love this. Filter out by tags, company, weed source, when was it created, when was it modified, blah, 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 all the way down. Branded to me means that they have an account set up under that email address with your agent site or your mobile app. So that's what branded to me means. You can also filter out by do they have neighborhoods established in their contact card, yes or no, right? And you can click apply. Another way you can filter by these tags, like magic, click on KW1. Now I'm only looking at my KW1 contacts, right? So that is one of the great things about using tags. Um, like this is super important and you can choose how many you're going to see. So right now I'm looking at one through 50 of 361. I can change this all the way up to 500 the difference in using 500, it's going to go really, really slow. It takes in a minute to load, right? But looking it up to 500 is great for taking bulk actions. So I could choose everybody now that's at KW1. And I can come over to this select bulk action. I can add a note, archive them, add some kind of a bulk activity. Maybe all of them came to a client appreciation event. Um, I can send bulk SMSs, bulk text messages if I'm using Twilio. I can add bulk tags. We can now remove tags. One of the newest features that is very near and dear to my heart is removing tags in bulk, right? So when we first got command, we all went nuts and we added 5 million tags and some of those may not apply anymore. You now have the opportunity to remove those in a bulk action way. We can add these folks to an email list, make a copy and share them with somebody, mark them as leads, unmark them as leads, put them all on a monthly neighborhood smart plan, right? Or something like that. Um, if I was going to put all 500 of these people on say my quarterly call plan, does anybody wanna get 361 tasks that tell you to call somebody in the morning? Cause I don't that would make me feel like I was gonna have a heart attack, right? So instead of doing that, that would be starting them all now, then you would get 361 tasks that say that I need to call these people, right? Or you can start them all on the following date, or you can stagger start them over the next couple of days. So maybe I want five contacts a day, right? Five calls to make off of my quarterly call plan, and maybe I have a different script that I'm using for different times of the year. Um, then I can stagger start them. And each day I'll get tasked for five people to make a phone call, right? So that's how you can use that bulk action item. You also have exporting and exporting mailing labels or exporting mailing labels as a PDF, okay? Everybody feel good about that? Good deal. Okay, so now that I've filtered everybody out to KW1, maybe I want to customize the way I'm looking at this. So I can click customize columns and maybe I need to call these people. So I would like for their primary phone number to show up first. I can drag that up and make it look like that. And then I can click apply. And now their phone numbers are going to show up first because this is my call list, right? It's moving slow because I have 500 selected to view. So now everybody's phone number shows up first. I now have the ability to go over and drop down here and click create smart view. And I can make this my KW1 call list and save, right? So now when I come into my contacts, I automatically default to my all contacts view because that's what I chose to default to, okay? 
So you can see recently active is first, and this is just my default view. This is all 1,246 of my contacts on my personal side. But now I can drop this smart view block and click this KW1 call list that we just created. It's going to change my view back to the 500, that I'm looking at 500, because that's what I had selected at the time. I had put the primary phone number first, so that saved, and it's only my KW1 contacts, right? So you can set up as many smart views as you want to work with your business. Does anybody have any questions about that, about smart views? You can see that I have lots of different ones set up for different things, and you have some pre-installed ones like who should I call, upcoming home anniversaries, these people don't have any neighborhoods established in their contacts. So if you're doing some fall cleanup of your database, which it's that time of the year, folks, from now until November 15th, um, if you're looking at the cycle of the database, fall cleanup is when we go in there and clean out our database and make sure that we have things updated as we need. Upcoming birthdays, campaigns, and never contacted leads. So you have some different ways that you can view these out and set up smart views, right? Customizing columns is super cool. Um, those, um, I'm losing my train of thought here. The custom fields that we added, right, in our contact, look at them all showing up here. So again, if Thanksgiving was coming up and I denoted how many people liked apple pie and how many people like pumpkin pie, I could actually add favorite pie to my columns and I could filter out by that to look at it. I've got my tags column way too big at the moment. Let's see if I can get that to pull over. There we go. There we go. So now I can get to that favorite pie column right here. So some of these people, I don't have that on them, right? But you would be able to filter out by who does have their favorite pie listed, which would be super cool. And you could even save that as a smart view as well. Okay. So let me go back to my all contacts view and show you guys a few more things. And then we're going to move into smart plans. Take your time, take your time, internet. We've got all day, just kidding. Okay, right now we're looking at a list view. We also have the ability, if my internet will catch up with me, there we go, to look at this bigger view so we can see things a little bit differently. If this is the way that you wanna look at your database, you could save this as your default view. Um, if this is how you want it to look, and we can scroll through and look at 51 through 100, et cetera, et cetera. I prefer this little list view. So that's another cool thing we can do. If you're running a lot of Facebook ads or if you really push out your website a lot and you've got a lot of leads coming in and you're on a team, they might be dropping into the lead pool. So at that point I could turn lead pool on if I was a rainmaker to see who's hanging out in the lead pool which is another cool feature. So that's kind of the full overview of contacts. Does anybody have any questions? Anything at all? Where would, can you show me where that bulk um, address label thing was? Was that under filters? The bulk neighborhood, there was talking about the neighborhoods? Mm, there was an option if you wanted to like create mailing labels. Oh yeah, yeah. So select however many Shannon that you want at the time, right? I've got 50 showing in my view right now. And I select it all with this little check. Then I can come over to bulk actions and I can add them to an email list right there. Good. Is that good, Shannon? Okay, good. All right. 
Fantastic. So somebody give me two ahas. I want two ahas before we move into smart plans. You guys didn't learn anything in an hour and 20 minutes. Somebody give me an aha. An aha on contact. I think I'm going to be go through the D2 um, and use that to help me organize um, cleaning up my contacts. Awesome. Because I get overwhelmed. I'll look and I'm like, oh, gosh, I need to, you know, move them from here to there or whatever. And I think maybe that would help me just to kind of organize what days I, I do what. Yep. And you can set up tags for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you could set up even a smart view. I think I have done that before. I don't, yep. So a smart view. So if you just want to come in and click on A&W and this is your call list for the week, right? Because they're tagged that way. And you can just work your way through, make those phone calls, open up the contact, take your notes over here on the side, save it and move forward to your next contact and keep making those calls. That's a great, great point, Shannon. Who else? I need one more. For me, it's oh, the smart up. view all together. Smart views all together? All yeah, smart. like I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good. And I think I heard, was it Edward? Edrington. Yeah, Monica, I just it was on the fall cleanup. Yeah. Time to clean up. It is. It is. Um, we had, Jason Abrams was the one that was talking about that the other day in a meeting, and I was like, thought about it but that's really smart um as i flipped through my paper notebook right before our class started i got my early christmas present to myself and i'm going to try it out later today i got one of these remarkable tablets so i'm super excited to test it out and i'll let you guys know how it works um but flipping through my notes yes it was like fall cleanup um, I think that was a Monday call. I want to find it because that's a great aha because I had it too. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Where is it? Okay, so fall cleanup is now through November 15th. And then starting November 15th through January 15th is called the winter of renewal. And then spring explosion and i think i missed what he called summer um but i will find that and i will get it to you guys because i just thought it that was an aha for me off of that particular call which was really cool okay so we've gone over contacts right you guys can see the importance of adding your information that's why kw went as far as to add this database data based health score to our home screen, right? So you can see I'm killing it on phone numbers and email addresses, right? Addresses and neighborhoods, um, I have a lot of opportunity there for growth, right? Um, thankfully, I don't actually sell houses anymore. If yours looked like this, probably not a great thing. <laughs> so don't be like me in this aspect and make sure that your addresses and neighborhoods are in the green, right? That's what we're looking for. These four key elements to get a contact to 100%, just so you know, it's these four key elements, phone number, email, address, and neighborhood, plus one, whether it's birthday, home anniversary, some other piece of data, right? That's what gets your contact up to 100%, okay? Monica, uh -huh. how do you, how do you um, tag your... Um... How do you tag the people that bought your listings, but you, you want to keep up with them because? Yeah, absolutely. Um, How do you tag those? I guess I, I would just create a custom tag that, that said bought my listing. I mean, okay. I, that's what I would okay. do. And then I usually tag people by year, right? So if they were a 2020 customer and then they bought something else from me in 2023, they would actually have a tag for both years. Okay, uh, thanks. So there, yeah, absolutely. And there's lots of different schools 
schools of thought on tagging y'all and use your resources, right? Like if, if, if tagging is something that you're really interested in doing, if you go into Facebook and go in into any of these um, KW command, command your conversion, any of these kind of pages here that we have set up by, these are just Keller Williams agents, right? That set these up for us. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually search tag in here and there are people that have shared um, like their tagging system, like this one right here, for example, I'll pull this one up, right? So they used red for source, that purple for city, events attended, status in green, other in yellow, partners in white, and their DTD2 tagging schedule in that dark gray color. So you can look at lots of examples and then say, hey, I think that's what would work for me and then model after it, right? R&D, rip off and duplicate. <laughs> that's, that's one of our biggest things here at KW. And that's a good thing because trust me, I came from a firm where that, that would not have been okay. Um, it wasn't a sharing is caring kind of firm. Everybody's very nice. Just didn't want to share their business tactics. All right. Cool deal. Great questions, guys. Please keep the questions going. The more that you ask questions, the better that these recordings turn out for others and for yourselves when you go back, right? Um, but without further ado, let's move into smart plans, right? Smart plans are a systematic way to reach out to your database, okay? So when you first log in, if you've not yet used smart plans, you're not going to see anything here. It's just going to be a list of nothing and be blank. Okay. So your first step that you're going to want to take is to go into your library. We'll have some featured smart plans up here at the top. We have the 10 smart plans that were provided by KW, right? So the bi-weekly and monthly neighborhood nurture, we looked at that. We looked at what the email looks like. Obviously it comes out once every two weeks or once a month. There are no edits, right? You add the contact, you have to make sure you have their email address and that they have a neighborhood established. You add them to the smart plan and it goes. You make, there's nothing that you have to do to it. And there's nothing that you can do to it, right? Next up, we have the eight by eight. So if you ever want to know what is in a smart plan, you can actually click the view steps button and you'll see that the first thing it does is either sends an automatic text if you're using Twilio or it's going to task you to manually send the text from your cell phone if you've chosen not to use Twilio, right? And it gives you the example of the text message to send or that is the text message that will be automatically sent if you're using Twilio. It delays for seven days. Touch task, send them an email that says let's grab coffee as part of the eight by eight smart plan, delays seven days. Phone call, delay, text, delay, smart plan, monthly neighborhood nurture, it's automatically gonna add them to the monthly neighborhood nurture if you added a neighborhood in their contact card. Delay, call, delay. So if you ever wanna see what the steps are, you can just look at the smart plan from here and click view steps. If you're like, yeah, I like that smart plan, then you can click add smart plan and it will then show up in your My Smart Plans library right here, okay? So we have the 10 from KW, bi-weekly neighborhood, eight by eight, the quarterly call plan. If you're using the quarterly call plan, you don't really have to use DTD2 and vice versa. Um, the quarterly call plan is just gonna break up everybody in your database. But if you're wanting to be more intentional with it, I actually like the DTD2 tagging system myself. Um, then you have that as, an op as a possibility as well. A midterm nurture, nurture, general check-in with a recently met contact to offer your expertise for something real estate specific and motivate your messaging around their needs. Long-term nurtures, right? Maybe it's the people that just bought from you. Birthdays, this is our only smart plan that is, well, this and home anniversary are only smart plans for now that are date um, triggered right? 
we don't yet have the ability to date trigger or smart plans. You could start it and then make it start on a specific date, but there's not a trigger of a date that makes it start. So the birthday and the home anniversary are the only ones. You will get an error message if you try to add a contact to the birthday smart plan that doesn't have a birth date in their contact card. Vice versa with home anniversary. Monthly neighborhood nurture, we've gone over. There's an open house follow-up that was set up. You can view the steps of that. Thanks for coming by the open house. What did you think? Right, delay, touch task, delay, phone call. So that one's set up for you there. There's the home anniversary, and there's also a promote my app smart plan. That's going to send them an email to ask them to download your app, delay a day, either automatically send them a text or tasks you to send them a text, delay, and then one more text. And that's the end of that smart plan. Okay. Top rated smart plans, right? The 555, lots of people like this one. Call, delay, touch task, delay, touch task, right? So you can look at it and see what it does. The maximum number of days that we can use in a smart plan is 90 if we're setting up our own customized smart plans. Just so you know, you'll see that this one that Blake McClure set up is a phone call, a 30-day delay, a touch task a 30 day delay, a touch task, a 29 day delay, because it has to be 90 days or less. And then he has it on repeat unlimited times. The cool thing is if you find out that you love making smart plans and you make one and you're like, this smart plan is, plan is awesome. Then you can publish it to the library and let other people use it, right? And that's what Blake did here. Um, so there are lots of high rated smart plans that people have used. We even got some starting to roll in in different languages, which is great because I don't speak any other languages except for asking for a beer in Spanish. That's about all I can do, right? Um, so those are really cool. Um, look, back to school smart plans, all kinds of different stuff that's here for you. Um, Marty Miller is one of my favorite smart plan builders. Marty Miller is a regional technology trainer and as well as an agent and he is very very smart and he does lots of sharing so say you wanted to find everything by marty miller we can actually just search for anything that marty miller shared right searching smart plans is newer um so here you go 66 day command challenge um part one through ten so he's got all kinds of different stuff here that he has shared and you are welcome to look through that and search that way which is cool or maybe you're looking for something specific, um, search for it. It might already exist, and then you don't have to worry about going through and building it, which is awesome. You can just add it to your own smart plans, and you can edit it to your liking. These are the most recently reduced or recently released smart plans that people published. Um, a simple Labor Day email design. That leads me to my next point. I love single email smart plans because as of right now, it doesn't mean it's not coming, but as of right now, again, we can't do date specific smart plans, right? So I can't trigger something to Labor Day to make it go off. But what I can do is I want to tell everybody happy Labor Day, right? All he did was create a smart plan with one step and that step is an email. I'm gonna download this and add it to my smart plans, which is what you guys would do with any smart plan that you like. When I move back to my smart plans, there it is, okay? I can click this pen. It's going to allow me to edit. Let this open up. Any day now, there we go. All right, so he did an email design. So I can actually click on it and click preview design. Happy Labor Day, relax, take a breath, celebrate the fact you make a difference in people's lives, reward your hard work with a meaningful break, enjoy your holiday, your friend and realtor. It's going to automatically populate your name. 
right there. And that's the email. That's what it looks like, right? Short, simple, to the point. One step, it's just an email for the smart plan. So if you want every single person in your database to get it, right? Then you can go back and watch this. You can have more than one command window open. And I quite often do if I'm doing different things. So now that I've made that smart plan and I've got it set up all to my liking, I can go into my contacts and I can look at 500 at a time if I wanted to. And then I could select all, drop down, add them to the smart plan. There's that Labor Day smart plan, select it and start it all on what, the sixth? Yes, right there. And then I can confirm and it is going to fire those off on the sixth. Happy Labor Day. Or maybe I want it to go out on Sunday, right? Because maybe everybody will be by the pool on Monday. Um, but you can choose when you want that to go out and then everybody will get that email in their inbox, which is awesome, <laughs> right? Um, so that's an example of a very simple smart plan that you can set up for yourself, okay? All right, but we are going to look at actually building out a smart plan and the different steps in that. If you go through and you don't see a smart plan, remember guys, time is money. So if somebody's already set up a smart plan that's doing almost exactly what you want, pull that smart plan into your own and just go through and edit it. But if you're a super creative and you wanna make your own and you know exactly what you want it to be, cool. You're gonna come into the upper right-hand corner. You're going to click create. Make sure that you give it a unique name. It can't match any other smart plan. So I'm going to call this test on 8 30, 2021 boot camp and apply. This is going to take me into my smart plan builder. Okay. You see this says add steps and save, then you can pick a trigger. Right now our only trigger is tags, right? We will get more triggers coming soon. So say that my first step is I wanna make a phone call. Then I'm just gonna click make a phone call. It's gonna add it over here on the left-hand side, okay? And I want it to say call I've got these merge fields over to the right. You can drop this down and say contact first name, contact last name, contact phone number, so that it shows up exactly how I want it to in my task list. I don't even have to open it up. I can just see I'm calling Shannon at this number, right? And then I can give it a description call to say, half, I'm gonna just stay on the Labor Day train. Happy Labor Day. Boom. Here's my step. And so maybe I want to start this on Friday because I really want to take Labor Day to the next level and I'm doing a Labor Day giveaway. Call to say Happy Labor Day. Invite to enter your contest by doing XYZ, whatever that is. Maybe you want them to fill out a survey. Maybe you want them to go on and like your Facebook page. Whatever it is that you want to do. I'm just using a contest as an example because it's what popped into my head. So call to say Happy Labor Day. Invite them to enter your contest by doing X, Y, Z. Remind them the deadline is 6 p.m. on Sunday. Six five, twenty 2021 Okay, so that step is good. I'm making that phone call, I'm saving it. Now I wanna set a delay. So I'm gonna set this to go off maybe Thursday, right? So I wanna set a delay for a day. And the next thing I wanna do, I could change this by the way to more days if I wanted to. The next thing I want to do is send an email. You can add emojis to your emails. I like to do that because it's shown that emojis increase people's 
willingness to interact with you. So you can go to getemoji.com. And so maybe I want to say vacation because I want something cool like a little palm tree or something like that. So I'm going to take this palm tree. And I'm going to go back to my smart plan and paste that into my subject line. It's hot outside. Don't forget to enter. And maybe you're giving away a Yeti cooler or a Yeti cup or whatever, right? So you give it a subject, you know, don't forget. to visit my Facebook page to enter to win the Yeti cooler deadline to enter is September at 6 p.m. Maybe I even want to say Sunday, September 5th at 6 p.m. You know, and you can put all your stuff down here at the bottom. Or if you wanted to take the time to make a design to make it look a little fancier, then you could do that too, right? Um, so, you know, don't forget to enter to win, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But then we could set another delay. And then maybe, um, let's see, that was, if I did this Thursday, delay today, this is Friday, delay a day. Then maybe I wanna send a text that says, tomorrow is the last day to enter. Visit my Facebook page or whatever the instruction is to enter, right? And then that text is gonna go out on Saturday. I'm gonna set it away for one more day. And then I could even add them to another smart plan when that ends. And maybe I just go ahead and add them to that Labor Day smart plan, right? And then Sunday or, Sunday or mo Monday, it's going to send it out, right? So, you can see you can build onto these smart plans however you want to. This was just one example. Um, there are lots of examples that you can make. Um, care calls, that was a huge one that we've gone over during COVID. Don't forget to call your people. It really does make a difference. I always use my mom as an example. Um, we got a new roof and I shared this house with my mom and my stepdad and my kids. But we got a new roof and then we got that that hurricane weather not long after that and the roofer called and he was like i just wanted to check on you and your family i drove by your house the other day i didn't want to knock on the door and disturb you the roof looks great i hope you guys are doing okay if there's anything i can do for you let me know to me that was normal because i'm used to doing stuff like that to my mom she was like i couldn't believe it he called to check on us. He drove by our house to make sure our roof was okay. It made her feel very important and very special, right? So think about those things. That really sets you apart from other people when you do stuff like that, right? So you can use these smart plans for whatever you want. The pre-installed ones, the ones that other agents have shared, ones that you decide you want to develop yourself. The sky is the limit with the number of ideas that you can use these for. So I highly recommend that you get in here and, and look around and see if there's anything that you think would be beneficial to your business. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far on setting this up? Everybody Did I miss Go ahead, Kay. <clears throat> did I miss it or did you say you call them also, but the text... Mm -hmm. is, the is the next best thing? I mean, you call all the people on your... So, I mean, it depends on what it's for, right? Um, if it's 
a follow-up smart plan to a Facebook ad. Okay. The first thing that I like to do, and I, that's a great question because you just put me on another track. These text messages, these automatic text messages from Twilio, they will only go off, I believe, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. our time. So if you're using a smart plan for a Facebook follow-up, do not make a text the first step because what will happen is it's not going to go, right? And if it's 730 at night and you're happy to call that person that clicked on your listing in Facebook, make the first step a call. So really think about what you're using the smart plan for, right? If it's a lead, speed to the lead is the most important. So you want to make a phone call first. If it came in at midnight, obviously you're not going to call them, but you'll see the task in the morning that says to call them, right? Um, so just think about stuff like that. And it just depends on what you're using it for, right, Kay? So uh, okay. If you're using it for, for making calls, then yes, a call is great. But automated texts are also good, just depending um, if you want to use Twilio for the automated texting function or not. And they're great for reminders, right? So the Facebook lead came in, I called, I emailed and said, I'm happy to help you. And then two days later, I sent them a text that said, hey, um, just reaching back out. I know you clicked on my house. Um for sale in Ardmore. I just wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions about the property or the neighborhood. You know, it's a great follow-up step, definitely. But first I have to hook up the Twilio. I have to. Yes, yes, ma'am. You do Twilio. have to have Twilio. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I can show you guys quickly where that is. So let's say that we're good with this smart plan. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So it saves all my steps. And now that I have some steps added, here's where I can now add this trigger event. So say that I want it to be a contact tag thing and I want this to be my Labor Day contest. Then I can create the tag Labor Day contest. I would have already created it. And then anybody that I add the tag Labor Day contest to, it would go automatically, right? Which in this, instance, we want it to be date specific. So we would actually just select all start on date, but you can use that, that tagging system. So say that you have a, a newsletter set up for third quarter and anybody that you add to your database, you want them to get the newsletter. So you created the tag newsletter. And when you add that contact and tag them with newsletter, they're automatically gonna get sent that newsletter, right? So that's what the trigger event of a tag would be for. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions on creating smart plans or adding people to smart plans? So we showed how to do it from the contact card, right? And now we're actually in the smart plans applet, which is the fourth one on the left. We can also come over here and add contacts this way. Just remember that when you're doing them this way, you can only see 20 at a time. So at the bottom, you can see viewing 20, one to 20 of, 1246, right? I could sort them out by tags. Again, another key thing that makes it important to tag people, right? I could search for them by name if I'm looking for somebody specific. Um, or I could select all 20 of these folks and then move forward and select the next 20 and then move forward and then add the people that way. I personally find it easier if you're adding a big group of people to, to smart plans just to do it from the contacts, right? Okay, so I know we've gone over a lot. We've looked all the way through contacts. We've looked all the way through smart plans. Um, I want to take this moment to talk about command itself, right? This program is put in place to help you, not hinder you not frustrate you and not upset you. You do not have to use all the pieces of command. I want you to think about command like your cell phone, right? It's a platform, it's got apps, just like your phone. These are your pre-installed apps. This is your app store where you can go and buy additional things if you so choose. Do you use every app on your phone every day? No, no, we don't. We have a couple of apps that we use all the time. The apps that you have to use in command, you have to add your contact at least with their name. 
you have to create an opportunity if they're going to have a transaction and turn in your commissions and your paperwork through the opportunity. And other than that, you don't have to use a single other piece of this technology, right? This just so happens to be what we use to check compliance and get you paid. So yes, you have to add your contact and create your opportunity and close it and turn it in. Other than that, everything else is if you want to use it. So I don't ever want you guys to get frustrated. I know that Shannon knows me well, Kay knows me well, Debo knows me well. I am here to help you guys. I am super passionate about our technology and I'm super passionate about helping you guys build your businesses through the use of technology and making your lives easier, not harder. So if at any time you have a question, send me a text and I will get back with you as soon as humanly possible, I promise you. And these ladies can attest to the fact that I will. And I think, oh no, Edward's still here. I've helped Edward out with a few things too. Um, I want to help you guys. I want you to engage with this and I want you to come to me. Don't let yourself get frustrated. <laughs> just shoot me a text. It could be a super simple oversight. You just missed a button or missed a click somewhere. You can hop, this is always my Zoom. You can hop in here with me and share your screen and I can help you through whatever issues you're having. If you want to be super intentional and you're like, I know I want to sit down with Monica and learn how to run a Facebook ad. If you go to kwtriadtech.com, which is my website, all of my specific stuff is down here below where you see my picture. This center of the screen is kind of me specifically. So these are the classes that are upcoming this week. This is where you go to get to my YouTube channel to get to all of the recordings. Here's a highlight video, my calendar. Each of our offices has calendars, but there's a whole lot on there. This is just my training. So if you're looking for something specifically from me, you can click on the tech training calendar, okay? And you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. So if you click here, you can schedule 15 minutes or 30 minutes with me and you just pop in your information, it puts it straight into my calendar, and then you come straight back to this Zoom, and I can help you out. But if there's not a time on here that works for you, that's okay. Still reach out to me and send me a text or an email. Either one of those is okay. If you ever call me, feel free to leave me a voicemail, but usually I am in Zoom, so I can't answer the phone. But I really, truly want to help you guys. I do not want this stuff to frustrate you, so I'm so glad that you guys are here. And we have eight minutes left for you guys to ask any questions that you have. Monica, uh -huh. I already know I'm going to miss Thursday, which okay. I really wanted to know how to do design. So if you're recording, how is the best way to go back and look at that recording? Yeah. So if you um, look over here, Shannon, on the left hand side of my website, these are all the videos from July's boot camp. If you just click on the link, it takes you straight to the YouTube playlist. And after today, that link will get replaced with August's boot camp videos, right? So that link will exist right there on the left hand side of my site. And you can always just click here and it takes you straight to my YouTube channel. And you'll see all the videos pop up here. You can sort through them by playlist. And you can also see featured channels down here at the bottom. Um, just so you guys know, like in order to be your market center tech trainer, I didn't get any kind of special training or anything. So these people that I have featured at the bottom, these, this is how I learned how to use command. It's through using it and going and looking at Marty Miller and Nick Baldwin and all these people's videos. Right. And I, I just decided that if you're looking in the six personal perspectives that we like to talk about so much, I decided to commit to self-mastery on command. And that's, that's how I got myself into the role that I'm in now, because I was just super passionate about this technology, having used so much of it and seeing what a pain in the butt that it was to use some of the other stuff. <laughs> I decided that I wanted to really learn how to use this at a high level and be able to share that knowledge with others. Um, that's a great question, but yes, they will be here on the left and you can just click through here and go straight to my YouTube channel. What else guys? No questions off limits. Can no. I jump ahead? Please. Um, so this has happened to me twice and I can't remember what I did wrong. Yeah. In opportunities. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
for instance, I've been working with somebody for almost a year and of course, um, our forms changed, updated. Yeah. Sure. And so I archived my old like the like the 2020 version buyers of agency stuff. agreement and yeah, etc. You're going to have to actually delete it, Shannon. You're going to have to delete, delete. Do not archive. Correct, because okay. the two dash T form already exists in the room, so it's not going to let you add another one. So when that when when the forms switch over and you have an old version, you will actually have to delete the form. And then and add the same, is that the same thing for like an offer to purchase? Just yeah. delete the old offer. Correct. Get it out any there. New, any new um, annual form, you'll have to replace it. You'll have to delete and then add the new one. Great. Why would you ever archive something then? Archiving something would be like maybe. Um, well, first of all, we didn't use to have the delete button. We had to actually fight to get that delete button. Um, second of all, maybe you had like a, a stipulation that they had to reply to your offer within 24 hours and then you never used it. You could just archive it to get out of your way so you don't have to look at it on the screen. What else, guys? Um, Monica, I have a question. How do you connect with uh, Trulio? How do we connect with what, honey? I'm sorry. Truly. Oh, Truly. Truly. yep. So if you click on your picture and your name in the upper right hand corner and go into your settings, it's going to bring us back to our integrations and applications that we have connected to command. And if we scroll down, 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 Twilio is down here at the bottom. If you have never set up Twilio before, it's going to say, set up Twilio over here and you're going to click it. It's going to take you into the marketplace. I'll show you what it looks like. I can't exactly replicate it because I already have Twilio in place, but you can actually see the pricing for Twilio. Um, liken it to old cell phone minutes, right? We have rollover credits. So for 316 a month, you get 300 credits. A short text is one credit. A longer text with more, more words in it is gonna be two credits. And if you add a picture to the text, it's going to be three credits, which is the max that you would ever pay is three credits. So the extra small package is what I recommend that you guys start with, unless you just know that you're really gonna be sending out a lot of text. Um, this extra small package is pretty good. It's 316 a month. If you don't use up your credits, they roll over into the next month and you can use them then. So that's how you set that up. Once you get in here, it will, when you click set up Twilio, it's going to bring you here. You're going to connect. You're going to pay your prorated amount. So it is prorated for the month. Um, so right now it's like the last day of the month, you would pay a couple of pennies to get this started and then you would get charged 316 for September. Um, and then once you finish that setup, it's going to direct you back to here and it's going to ask you to set up a Twilio number because our Twilio number is not the same as our cell phone number. It cannot be the same. There is no bulk messaging platform that allows you to text from your actual cell phone number. That answer everybody's questions. Anything else about Twilio? It's a great question. It does. Thank you. You're very welcome. If you can you hear me, Monica? I can. Yeah. Okay. If you're not using your cell phone number for that Twilio, where does that number come from? So it's through Twilio, the company. Um, they, they give you one for you. Right. Once I sign up with them, they'll assign that number. Yeah, you'll get to actually pick your number. Oh, I in see. In the setup process, you'll see some some ones that you get to choose from. And it okay. shows you, Gail, like this one's from Rocky Mount or this one's from Winston-Salem or this number's from Clemens because that's what shows up on the caller IDs, right? Right, gotcha. But um, you get to choose it that way. Yep. Okay, all right. Good deal. Great questions, guys. Okay, anything else? My head is swimming. Yep, don't <laughs> let it overwhelm you. Just remember, we're going to take but, it one um, step at a time. Take it one yes. step at a time. Um, I, uh, the, the one question I have, and I think it'll just be something that I'll move into later, but yeah. 
uh, as I'm putting, because I'm kind of, you know, not new to real estate, but new to this area. So database will all be uh, things that are created new. So yeah. I may have an email address, may have a person's name, may even have a telephone number, but I certainly wouldn't have these other questions that can build upon programs and stuff in yeah. the command system. So uh, the question I may bring up to you later uh, would be creating a form that actually I would attach to, for them to fill out to just say, look, you know, could you I'd like to add some more information in? Would you be willing to do this? And by the way, yep. I'm going to put in a drawing or something like that. So that's something you can help me kind of put together later. You absolutely could do that. You could do that by using um, a Google form. And I love gamifying our business. It's huge. And actually, um, because I did attend virtual mega camp, um, I haven't gotten to watch James Shaw's breakout session yet that was called just that, Gamify Your Business. And so that's actually on my list of stuff to watch today and take notes on my new Remarkable and see how that works. And um, that's a really great idea. And you can definitely do that. And I'm happy, happy, happy to help you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you all so much for coming. And I'm here for you. Tomorrow. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10. I'm going to go right. over opportunity. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.